Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you step by step how to make this image I created for the television show CSI Crime Scene Investigation. The dimensions for this document are 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. This is the x-ray image I used in the background which I found on Google's image search. To bring it into our document press Control or Command A which selects the entire image and then Control or Command C which copies it. Then open your CSI document and press Control or Command V to paste the x-ray into it. In order to see the entire x-ray press Control or Command T to call up your transform and then Control or Command 0 to see the entire transform on our screen. To reposition it click anywhere inside the transform and move it. To rotate it, move your cursor to a corner and when you see a small curved double arrow, drag it clockwise or counterclockwise to rotate it around its axis. To accept the transform, click on the little arrow at the top or simply press enter or return. To fit the entire document on your screen, press control or command zero. Press the new layer icon to make a new layer and then press on the foreground color which opens up the color picker. Type in 50% in the brightness box. Then go to filter and filter gallery. Open up the sketch folder, choose halftone pattern, the size 2, contrast 50 and the pattern is line. Press the letter Z to call up your magnifier tool and then click and drag diagonally to enlarge the area up. Go to select and color range. Click on the sample colors box and choose highlights and then press OK. We need to invert the selection so press Control Shift I or Command Shift I on a Mac. Press D to make the foreground color black and the background color white and press Alt Delete or Option Delete to fill the selection with black. Go to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. We'll blur it by one pixel. Go to the Layers panel and change the mode to Overlay. Click on the X-Ray to make it active. Click on the Adjustment Layer icon and then choose Solid Color. When the color window opens, choose a bright green. Change the blending mode to Darken. Press Control or Command as you click on the X-Ray to call up its selection. And then press the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask. I'll call up my brush tool and bring down the opacity to about 42%. Then I'll brush over the top and bottom of the layer mask in order to blend those areas into the black background. We'll click on the top layer and then click on the character icon. This will open the text dialog windows. You can download a free version of the CSI font at fonts.net. The font is called CSI Cream Source Inside. Click on the color box and choose white. Press the letter T to call up your type tool and type CSI colon. I'll highlight the type and then increase the point size to a whopping 319 points. Call up your move tool and then click on the letters and move it into position. Go back to the layers panel and click on the FX button. Choose inner glow. The layer style window will open. Choose the blend mode as normal. The opacity at 100. Click on the color box and choose a bright green. Make the size 9 pixels and then click on Outer Glow. Make the blend mode normal, opacity 100. Click on the color and choose bright green again. And for the Outer Glow type in 21 pixels. Keep in mind depending on the size and resolution of your document and text you may find different numbers work better for you. Choose a smaller point size and type in Crime Scene Investigation. Highlight the text and increase the point size. Call up your Move tool and reposition your text. Press Alt or Option as you click on the CSI effects and drag it into the Crime Scene Investigations layer. Double click on the Inner Glow layer and change the size to 2 pixels. 
Click on the line texture and reduce the opacity to 40%. This is the magnifying glass we'll add to our image. Before we add it to our document, let's separate it from its white background. We'll go to the Quick Selection tool and then click down and drag across the outside of the magnifying glass. To fill in areas it missed, just drag a cursor inside those areas. We need to invert the selection, so press Control shift i or Command shift i on a Mac. Press Q to get your quick mask, and then go to the elliptical marquee tool. With the shift key pressed down, click and drag out. To move it, press the space bar. To fill it, press Alt or Option Delete. Press Control or Command D to get rid of the selection. To fill in the rest of the glass area, we'll add another circular selection. This time, however, we'll position the selection a bit closer to the handle. Press Q to make the entire quick mask into a selection. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut the magnifying glass out and place it on its own layer. We'll unnest it by clicking on the tab and dragging the document out and then clicking on the magnifying glass layer and dragging it out onto the CSI document. We'll close the magnifying glass document, press yes, and then OK. We'll copy the X-rays adjustment layer onto the magnifying glass by pressing Alt or Option as you click on it and drag it above the magnifying glass layer. To reduce the size of the magnifying glass, press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform and then Control or Command-0 to see the entire transform on the screen. Rotate and move the magnifying glass into position and then press the arrow at the top or Enter or Return to accept it. Press Control or Command-0 to see the entire image on your screen. We need to rearrange some of the layer order in the Layers panel. To make sure the line texture is affecting all the layers, let's move it to the top. Grab the magnifying glass and drag it just below the line texture. And then bring the color adjustment layer just above the magnifying glass. Hover your mouse or pen in between the two layers and press Alt or Option as you click. This will ensure that the adjustment layer will only affect the one layer below it. Press Ctrl or Command as you click on the magnifying glass to call up its selection. Then press Q to make the selection into a quick mask. Click on your paint bucket tool and reverse the foreground and background colors by pressing on the little double arrow or just press the letter X. Click outside of the magnifying glass to delete the quick mask in those areas. I like to click two or three times to ensure it removes any fringes of the quick mask. Press Q to get your selection and Control shift i or Command shift i to invert it. We'll save the selection by pressing Select, Save Selection, and then press OK. Click off the eyeballs of the adjustment layer and the magnifying glass to hide them. Click on the top layer, which is the line texture, and then press the New Layer icon. We'll make a composite snapshot of the entire image and place it on its own layer. To do this, press Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E, or Command, Shift, Option, E on a Mac. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up the Transform tool, and then go to a corner, hold down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option, and drag out to enlarge it. To accept the transform, click on the little check mark at the top, or simply press Enter or Return. Click on the Channels tab and press Ctrl or Command as you click on the inside shape of the magnifying glass. This will call up its selection. Click on the Layers tab and then click on the Layer Mask icon. The Layer Mask revealed the inside circular area of the magnifying glass showing the image that we enlarged with the Transform tool. Remember, in a Layer Mask, white reveals while black hides. We'll make the magnifying glass and its adjustment layer visible and then click on the enlarged CSI image. Press B to get your brush tool. We're going to add some shadows and highlights on the glass. For the shadows, make the mode multiply and the opacity is 
Now just brush in a shadow along the lower right edge of the glass. And now for the highlight, reverse the foreground and background colors by pressing on the little double arrow or simply press X. For the highlight, change the blending mode to linear dodge and the opacity to 20%. Before we paint in the highlight, we need to call back the circular selection of the glass. Press Control or Command as you click on the layer mask. And then go to Select and Transform Selection. Go to a corner, hold down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and drag it in, and then move it around into position, and then click on the check mark to accept it. And now gently brush in a highlight on the left side. Press Control or Command D to get rid of the selection. So here is our finished CSI crime scene investigation end frame, just like the ones you see on the show. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.